now that we got the charge tube routed all the way to the front of the vehicle, it's time to install the intercooler. The first thing you're going to do is assemble the intercooler, just a couple parts. It's charge tube, the plastic intake shroud. I have it facing me, so as if you're driving, you're going to be sitting here. This is going back. The tube we routed is coming into here. You want to make sure your blow-off valve is on the driver's side. And this one's a little tight, so I'm going to put some 3M silicone paste. Just kind of lubes it up, makes it a little bit easier to slide on there. Slide that tube on and tighten it down. Then we'll install the plastic shroud. Slide it in there, should be self-tappers in the kit, four of them. And last thing we're gonna do is put our boost reference line from the blow-off valve. And then we're ready to go in the vehicle. Now take your intercooler assembly, drop it down in the hood. Be careful, not snag any of the lines up here. Use the four hose clamps to secure the intercooler to the front subframe here. Two per side. Last but not least, tighten up this hose clamp to the plastic OEM tube. And make sure your boost line coming from your blow-off valve is routed cleanly and not kinked on the way back. So grab your power jet collar and your fuel line and mount them together. It's 11 sixteenths and three quarter. Make sure it's perpendicular and in line here, just like so. Now we're gonna hook up the fuel line with the OEM fuel line. This one, is not pressurized right now because we have the fuel on of it, but yours will be. So maybe lay a rag over it. Safety glasses might not be a bad idea. Push the button, push in, pull out. Connected to the aero charger fuel line. Connect it back into the OEM connector. We're gonna install the, the last bit of the charge tube between your OEM tube and your throttle body. Ours is blue, yours gonna be black. No big deal. Slide it on there. And just so you guys know, this piece is only on, well actually both these pieces are only on the four seater. The two seater, the charge tube will come all the way back. So now we're gonna hook up our boost reference line from our power jet controller. We got a T here, T it in to our blow off valve. And obviously it's still gonna go up to your boost gauge. Next up is the gauges. First thing you're gonna do, drill two holes in the back to run your wires through inch and a half on the left side, do an inch in the center. Then you'll grab your, your gauge mount, use it as a template, mark the holes for your push starts, drill those out, you'll be ready to mount your gauges. Mount your gauges up to your panel before you put it in. Before I toss the boost gauge in there, I'm gonna cut myself off some line. You'll get like 15 foot of the boost line in your kit, plenty, you got plenty extra. Cut yourself off a few feet. Reboost gauge, insert it like this so. Stuff the wires through the holes. Insert the push pin. And then hook your boost reference line up to the T that you placed in here previously. Now we're ready to grab the fuel commander. First part of it is gonna be installing your power connector. You're gonna reach into the dash here. It's gonna have a blank already connected there. Remove the blank, toss it aside, grab yours. It's gonna be this side. You're gonna make sure you got the red going to red, black going to black. And the other side's gonna have your ground coming out of it. So now we got our, our power line hooked up. We can hook it up to our AFR gauge. Plug it in like so, 
This ground will start with our fuel commander wiring harness and you'll have a single wire coming off and that's your ground. It's the only plug that will plug into it. Pretty simple. Now we'll drill a few holes so we can get our Aero Commander in the glove box so it's out of your way. Still plenty of length so you can dial it in, but when you're not messing with it, it's out of sight, out of mind. You're gonna drill two holes, one in the side of here. There's not too much on the other side. You'll be able to look in there. Still be careful, there's an antifreeze line. And then we'll drill one up into the glove box. Take the Aero Commander, route the connector down through our hole. Through the side, plug it back in. Next, we're gonna hook into the map sensors. The one single one will go to our new one that we installed with the kit. This one with the split, you'll unhook the factory OEM map sensor, plug it into ours, and then plug it back into the stock location. Next, we're gonna take the power jet. Plug in, the power jet's down here. Plug it in like so. Next, we're gonna come back and hook into the injectors. Doesn't matter which side's which, will work either way. Unplug the stock one. Plug it back into our harness. Plug that one, that was on that same side, back in. Do the same with the front one. And that completes your fuel commander. As usual, we always stress, you gotta have the cleanest routing and stuff you can possibly do. You know, zip tie everything up. After we plugged everything in, we kind of went through it, laid it out how we thought it should be, and how we thought it would be the cleanest and less likely to chafe or get a hole or have any problems later on. Next, we're gonna take the cable that mounts the AFR gauge to its sensor in the back. Plug it into the gauge. Kind of lay it out where you think you're going to route it. Keep in mind you'll be coming back later to zip tie it up. Make sure it's all looking good. Sneak it underneath, right back to there. So I'm going to mount the dash back up. Make sure your cables and hoses aren't going to get pinched. They're all tucked in there neatly. Stuff it up like that. Finish zip tying up my AFR cable. Now it's time to calibrate our air fuel ratio gauge. We're going to leave it unplugged. We're going to rotate the key on. The vehicle does not need to be started. Let it cycle through. Shut it back off. We're going to wait till the taillights go completely out before we plug it back in. It's going to take 28 to 40 seconds. All right, we're going to plug it in. Walk back up to the front of the vehicle. Leave your sensor hanging out to the open atmosphere. Rotate your key. It's going to say HTR for heat, heater. It's going to warm up the sensor. And then it should say CAL for calibration. Now that it says 224, we know we're good. We can shut the key off and install our sensor in the exhaust pipe. Now that our lights went out, I unplugged the sensor. The sensor already has anti seize on it. Going to rotate it in. Grab my 7 8 wrench. Snug her down. Again, as you can see, my exhaust assembly is loose. It'll be loose till I get my bed on here and then don't forget to tighten your 13 mil. Now I got it tight, I'm gonna plug it back in. I'm gonna take the excess slack back into the cab here because I don't want the wires around the hot turbo and exhaust. There's plenty of room right in here to wrap it up cleanly and zip tie it out of the way. All right, we're ready for the deck install now. It's only gonna be six bolts. This guy up here. Got six bolts, they're all different lengths. The, the two longest ones go in the middle. 
Two short ones go in the very rear from the bottom up. The one on the driver's side will be the one holding our exhaust. That's where I'm gonna start. Tightening up the exhaust bolt. It's 10 millimeter. Now we're finally tightening up, tightening up that exhaust to the turbo. It's a 13 mil. There's four bolts. Make sure you get them all nice and tight. Last thing you're gonna do is take the template provided with the kit, cut it out, cut the center out, draw your hole, and then cut your hole out. There's also some trimming provided with the kit. Then you'll wrap the hole with trim, install your hood, and you're race ready. All right, so now we got our kit installed. You're gonna get all excited, wanna go drive it, don't go drive it. First thing, or the last thing I should say that we have to do is get some clutching in there. We added a ton of power. If you just go drive with stock clutching, it's just gonna not run correctly. It's gonna go hit the rev limiter right away. So make sure you get the clutching that we recommend. It's gonna come in your kit. Put that in there before you go drive it. All right, that's it for our install. If you got any questions, feel free to call us or check us out on aerocharger.com. Now it's time to take it out for a rip.